Malaria is a critical disease issue that we're dealing with in Asia for several reasons. One, the fact that it causes a high amount of morbidity and mortality or sickness and death, but also because of the impact it has on communities, on economies, and the impact it has on migrants and mobile populations. Um, we know that despite the achievements that have happened with malaria control over the past um, several decades, we are now seeing a, a resurgence of cases in some areas and also an emergence of resistance, which means that the drugs we have to treat malaria are no longer working as effectively. Now, in the past, several decades ago, this happened um, and we lost the ability to treat much of the malaria through the standard drugs, so new drugs had to be found. Uh, we're now seeing emergence of resistance to these new drugs, which is a big cause for concern, because if that resistance grows and spreads, um, it can mean that the fight against malaria across the world is uh, significantly compromised. So what we're talking about now is not just treating malaria, not just controlling malaria, but within the Asia-Pacific region, we're going to completely eliminate malaria in the region. And this will save lives, this will spur economies, and um, critically spur development within the region. The world has made unprecedented progress over the last 15 years. In 2015, the World Health Assembly uh, adopted a new global technical strategy. One of the guiding principles of this new malaria strategy that will take us forward up to 2030 is uh, the principle of equity and reaching um, uh, the most marginalized populations. This is a by and large an equity issue, but potentially also one of extraordinary relevance for any malaria elimination effort. I think what we're seeing in the greater Mekong sub-region um, is uh, a focus on this problem, understanding potential ways of approaching it, and the lessons that will be learned here will be of direct application to other parts of, of the world. Uh, we are working with IOM in three countries, in Myanmar, in Laos, and in Cambodia. Uh, it's very significant because uh, one is that um, the collaboration will involve uh, addressing migrant mobile populations in various settings. So for instance, in um, Myanmar, uh, our intervention with IOM would be in uh, private companies, private corporations, and we'd like to see how the private sector would be involved in addressing these needs. In Cambodia, we are trying to work with uh, the, Depart the Ministry of Labor and the Ministry of Defense, and we try to involve also the uh, soldiers as part of the mobile population groups. In Laos, we're looking at uh, community-based interventions, uh, particularly in areas where the in, in border areas in Laos. So we've been working with IOM, uh, uh, not just in malaria but also in in HIV projects uh, dealing with migrant and mobile population. So hopefully, the results of this uh, meeting and uh, uh, the discussions would be brought and would be in, uh, would inform uh, a conference that ADB and IOM would be holding uh, in Dalat, Vietnam sometime uh, mid-November. Uh, that would be for migrant mobile populations and malaria as well. The forum today is quite significant because we're talking about malaria, migrants and mobile populations. We need to have a concerted effort in addressing the health of migrants, particularly in accessing malaria prevention, care and treatment. And this forum, in partnership with WHO and uh, UNOx and, uh, and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation as well as with OutAid, will be a good uh, forum and platform to discuss relevant issues on addressing health of migrants, including malaria and programs and services. IOM's role here, or the added value of IOM, is that we're working with beyond with health sector as well as non-health sector, particularly with the immigration, with transportation, with social welfare, with education, with agriculture. And, uh, one of the things that IOM does is we are the secretariat to the Joint United Nations Initiative on Migration and Health in Asia. It's otherwise called as JUNIMA. It's a partnership with governments, with uh, UN agencies, 
civil society as well as with development partners. We work on making sure that the health of migrants are addressed in a more meaningful way, in a more engaging way through multi-sector partnerships. We're here at this meeting um, that is considering uh, malaria in mobile and migrant population. Uh, this is a very, very critical thing for the Southeast Asia region. Um, the countries of the greater Mekong subregion have committed themselves to eliminating malaria uh, by the year 2030. Um, the, this malaria elimination effort will hinge on our capacity to reach mobile and migrant populations. Uh, this is really one of the most critical aspects of the, the uh, strategy for eliminating malaria and uh, for discussion at this meeting. Um, WHO is very committed to eliminating malaria uh, by 2030 in this region um, by uh, uh, facilitating uh, universal access to health healthcare services and, and malaria services for, for border and migrant populations. And we're very committed to working with partners like the IOM, uh, which would be critical. Um, the, the collaboration would be critical uh, for us all to reach these populations, to provide them with the kind of services they need uh, to uh, implement the kind of surveillance systems that will be needed to detect malaria where it is uh, and the kind of services that will be needed to, uh, to eliminate this disease. So the collaboration with IOM um, and other partners, uh, other development partners in the subregion uh, is so important for this effort.